guys. I thought today we would look at how to use the multi-hooping function on the Luminaire. And actually, this is also on the Dream Machine as well. So on either machine, you can use this. Um, first, we're going to go to our embroidery screen. I'm going to go to Category 1, uh, the butterfly, rather. And then I'm going to go to Subcategory 07. Whoops. There we go. I'm going to scroll down and pick a quilting pattern. I'm going to choose 012. This could be any pattern, really. But I'm just going to choose that, and I put set. Okay, there's my pattern, and I'm going to stitch that out. So I'm going to go to my embroidery screen. And now I'm just going to choose layout. And before I stitch this out, I'm going to hit this button here. It looks kind of like a bobbin or like a sideways ladder. Different people see it as different things, but it's the multi-hooping button. I'll press that. Okay, and now I'm ready to go. I've got my machine uh, all threaded. The hoop is ready, so I'm going to put down my presser foot, and green means go, so I'll push my go button. And I'm going to let this stitch out. And through the miracle of the video camera, we're not going to have to sit here for the three minutes it'll take to stitch this pattern. We'll fast forward and go to the end. But uh, you can see this is a, a pretty large pattern. It only takes three minutes to stitch because it's just straight stitches. So it goes very quickly. Uh, that's what makes quilting in the hoop kind of easy and fun. might notice here I did draw a horizontal line on my fabric before I began. It just gives me a frame of reference. I don't exactly need it because of uh, this, this multi-hooping function is going to help me keep my patterns lined up correctly. But it just gives me a frame of reference. So I make sure that I'm about halfway in my hoop and that my designs are lining up correctly. Okay, now that first pattern is stitched out, and let's go see what the screen has to tell us. Okay, it says the embroidery is finished. Okay to connect the next pattern? And we're going to say, okay, let's do that. Let's try again. Okay, all right. So this time I'm going to pick the same pattern, but I wouldn't have to. I could pick something entirely different than I wanted, but I'm going to go down here to subcategory 07 and pick pattern 012 again and hit set. Okay, so there's my pattern. And you'll notice down here on my editing screen, I've got the multi-hooping uh, button uh, selected and in the bottom right corner. So I'm just going to push that. And it's going to talk me through how to connect to the next pattern. So um, it says select the position where the next pattern will be. Now notice uh, when you're on this screen, the first pattern that's stitched out is now sort of grayed out. It's the light purple on the screen. And the, the next pattern I'm going to stitch is the one that's in dark purple. So the default it comes up to is it's going to stitch out to the right. I actually want it to stitch to the left. So I'm going to go up to these buttons here and rotate around that original image where I would like my next image to be. So you'll see I can um, do it side by side. I can do top and bottom. I can do uh, diagonally off the corners. I can also do it, see, halfway across or halfway up or down from the original block. So that gives me a lot of um, choices. In this case, I want it to line up on the left-hand side of my image, okay? Um, and I want to make sure that down here at the bottom where they come together, that they're actually going to touch. So I had stitched this out a minute ago and found out they didn't quite come together. I'm going to scooch over just a tad. See if I can get them to line up just right. Okay, let's tell it okay. And okay, so now uh, on the screen it's telling me it wants me to put my embroidery positioning mark on the material securely so that the mark is inside the red frame. So let's go over here and see what they mean. See, it's projecting an image of my snowman right on my fabric. I don't know if you can see that. But I'm going to take my snowman sticker 
and put it right where the projected image is. Now it's pretty easy to line that up because it is projecting the image. I can see just where it's supposed to be. But if I'm off a little bit one way or the other, it's going to be okay because the camera is going to scan and know exactly where I've put the sticker. So it can um, adjust if I get a little bit off. Okay, so I've got that done. Now the screen, once I've got that done, wants me to hit scan. And it's warning me the carriage is going to move when I hit scan. Of course it will. I'm going to hit the scan button. And it's recognizing the sticker. See there on the screen, you can see it, see it. It's putting its foot down. Okay, now it's moving and it wants me to put a second sticker where it's projected that. So now you can see with having two points, that lets it really orient in space where, uh, where your stitches are. So I'm going to put my second snowman down. And now, notice too that on this they have me put the snowman standing on his head. So just pay attention with how the projected image is. It wants, in this case, the bottom to be up. So the biggest part of the snowman is facing up, his head is facing down. Doesn't matter other than I have to do it just the way that the projected image is showing, okay? So now my image again, my screen over here says scan. So I'm pushing scan. And the hoop is gonna move till it finds my sticker. Okay, it's found it now. Now it says do not remove the embroidery positioning marks, but please re-hoop the material so that the next pattern and the center of the two marks are in the embroidery area. Okay, so I am going to pause for a minute and do that, and then I'll be right back with you. Okay, so now we've re-hooped the fabric. Let me show you over here, and I've left the stickers on where the machine told me to put them. Um, so they're now on the right-hand side of the hoop because my uh, pattern's going to stitch out to the left of the original one. That's how I had it set up. You could set it up any way you wanted, but that's how I did mine. So now the screen is telling us to not remove the positioning marks, rehoop the material, um, so that the next pattern in the centers of the two marks are in the embroidery area, which is what we've done. And then it has uh, tells us to hit the scan button. So we're going to hit scan. And now let's watch what happens. Okay, now it's going to scan my hoop and look for those two snowmen. Pull this out of the way so you can see. All right, so it sees the first one, it puts the foot down on it. And now it's making any adjustments. Okay, now it's going to the second one. It's found that. It's going to move over to the center of the snowman and put the foot down there. Okay, now over on the screen it shows us that it is recognizing it. It says the um, embroidery positioning marks are recognized. Go ahead and remove the embroidery positioning marks and embroider your pattern. Okay, so I'm going to remove my marks and I'm going to tell it okay. All right, so now we're on our, um, our embroidery screen. If you go to layout, you'll see everything is grayed out because now it's in its automatic mode and it's going to go ahead and stitch it out where we told it to. So I no longer have the ability to move it or make any changes at this point. So I'm just going to um, put down my pressure foot, and then green means go. I've got it threaded. I'm ready to roll. Go ahead and let it stitch out. So one thing to note, this pattern has a definite begin and end point. And the beginning and the end on this pattern really should touch. So we'll see how that works out. Um, using the this particular tool, I don't have as much control here at the end of where it's going to line up. If I wasn't using the multi-hooping tool, I would have projected the image and still been able to move it. 
using the multi hooping tool, I can project my image, but it no longer lets me move the pattern um, because it's taken control for me. So we'll see if it lines up perfectly. Um, this might be something that you'd be better off using when you're not doing an edge to edge pattern that has to physically connect, but where you have a pattern that, that just sits side by side with one another, um, then it won't be need to be quite as precise. Um, but with this, we'll, we'll see how we come out. We want them to be butted up uh, close enough to each other so that the beginning and end stitches touch. So we'll see what happens here. And again, we're going to use the magic of video to go through this faster than it actually stitched out. This pattern, again, takes three minutes. We don't want to wait that long, so we'll just fast forward here. Ah, that's perfect. You didn't see here it, it uh, actually connected just perfectly. Um, so when I was lining that up, I did use the right arrow key to nudge it just, I think, two clicks to the right, and that made it turn out perfectly. So I'm, I'm thrilled to death with that. If I wanted to, let's look here at the screen. It now says embroidery is finished. OK to connect the next pattern. So I could keep connecting these all the way across my quilt and have a completed edge-to-edge -edge pattern. Um, once I got all the way across the width, I could then move down my quilt and go from top to bottom, connect them that way. So um, anyway, that's a real quick demonstration of how our edge-to-edge -edge, uh, or multi-hooping tool works. Um, if you have any questions, just post them on our Facebook page and I'll get right back to you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.